welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you guys so much for joining me for the video today. Now last week, I was going to do a story on the nuke suspension, obviously huge news coming out of the NFL. But as I dug into that story, I actually found out some information about PEDs that I wanted to put out instead. So if you haven't seen that, first and foremost, go check that video out. But today I am going to cover Nuke and the Arizona Cardinals and answer the questions, what are the Cardinals without Nuke? Now before I get into all of that, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Please consider giving me a like and subscribe. I cannot thank you guys enough for the support. It means the world to me and it helps me out so very much. With that done, let's get into this version of Hot Off The Press. Now before we deep dive it, just going to quickly go over the situation for those who may not know. DeAndre Hopkins remains eligible to participate in all preseason practices and games and he can return to the active roster after the sixth regular season game this coming season. In a statement on social media last Tuesday, Hopkins stated, in my 10 year NFL career, I have never tested positive for using performance enhancing drugs. To learn that my November test came back with trace elements of a banned substance, I was confused and shocked. I am very mindful of what I put in my body and I have always taken a holistic approach, so I am working with my team to investigate how this could have happened. But even as careful as I have been, clearly I wasn't careful enough. I apologize to Cardinals fans, my teammates, and the entire Cardinals organization. I never want to let my team down. I fully intend to get to the bottom of this, and as soon as I have more information, I will share it. So clearly, big blow and a surprising blow for Hopkins is a really unfortunate situation all around. On ESPN, Hopkins brand manager Doug Sanders wrote in a text to ESPN's Adam Schefter that a test in November returned trace elements of a banned substance, and that tests in both the months before and after were negative. Now this is a six game suspension. He's eligible to return in week seven and Hopkins has dropped his appeal on this. So it is set in stone. So to find out what the Cardinals are going to be without Nuke, we first have to look at what was his impact last season. Now he was only able to play in 10 games because he had injury issues then as well. 10 games, 42 receptions for 572 yards, but he did score eight times. He was not nearly as much of a volume receiver in 2021 as he was in the previous years in his career. With all those weapons in Arizona's passing attack, Kyler Murray was able to spread the ball around a lot more and he took advantage of the mismatches that presented themselves. This does not mean, however, that Nuke took a step back in his play on the field. He just wasn't needed nearly as much to be that sole provider of production in the wide receiver room. Actually, prior to his injuries, Hopkins was as good in 2021 as he has been in the past or maybe even better. He had a higher catch percentage, yards per target, and yards after the catch per reception that was through week eight prior to that injury when we compare those numbers to his other career averages. And if we really just look based on his presence on the field alone, Hopkins made a giant impact. The way that he pulls coverages and forces the defense to make decisions on who they're gonna leave single covered, Murray is able to then pick apart the opposition because of it. His absence will have a massive impact. As far as the Kyler and Nuke connection, DeAndre Hopkins has 157 catches for 1,979 yards and he scored 14 touchdowns in 26 games with Kyler Murray in their time together in Arizona. That is incredible that he's almost hit that 2,000 yard barrier in a season and a half more or less. These are clearly really impressive stats on a per game basis and show just how important it is to have Nuke available. He changes not only Arizona's offensive success as a whole, but he has a big impact on Kyler Murray's success as well. Taking a step back, let's look at what Arizona did in 2021. They went 11 and six. And we do also have a sample of them without Nuke last year because he was banged up. In those seven games though, Arizona just went three and four. 
We saw them absolutely crumble down the stretch. They went from being viewed in the beginning part to the middle part of the season as potentially the very best team in the NFL after starting 10 and two to losing four out of those last five games and surrendering the division crown to the Rams who absolutely demolished them in the NFC wildcard round. I absolutely believe that Hopkins' absence contributed to the team falling apart, but it was not the sole reason that Arizona could not finish strong. Rondale Moore and Chase Edmonds both had injuries towards the end of the year, and that certainly did not help. While James Conner was able to step up pretty admirably in Edmonds' absence, he got banged up too as the bell cow in the backfield. Now it makes it more interesting then that the Cardinals decided to let Edmonds walk, and hand a fat contract over to Connor this past offseason that makes him the leader of the rushing group in 2022. And when we look at Kyler Murray, his ankle injury was always more than Arizona let on. The severity of it was clearly more than they wanted people to know about, and the high ankle sprain that was never classified as far as I could see as a high ankle sprain, and also killed my fantasy team so I would know about it because I was looking, that's another time and place, it nagged him for the entire year after injuring it in Green Bay in week eight. He was never really the same after that and not having Nuke only exasperated it. If Murray can't stay healthy in 2022, you can kiss any playoff hopes for Arizona goodbye. Now, in addition to this, there's also evidence that finishing a season strong is just not in head coach Cliff Kingsbury's DNA, as this trend has now followed him from his time in college at Texas Tech to the NFL. Over the last three years, the Cardinals have started 3-3-1, and 6-3, and 10-2 and and last year. Those seasons ended in runs of 2-7, and 2-5, and five, and 1-5, and five, respectively. Those are tanking a season for high draft pick type of records and not something that you would expect from a team that is in the playoff hunt. At some point, you need to figure out how to maintain success, whether that's self-scouting and adjusting your own tendencies to make it harder on your opponent or just figuring out what you can do differently to get the dubs. Kingsbury has yet to do that. Now let's look at Arizona's wide receiver situation and what has happened during the off season. Now they did lose Christian Kirk in free agency as the Jaguars basically bet the farm on his development into a true number one wide receiver. They gave him $84 million. Now there was no way that Arizona was gonna be a player at this price and quite honestly, I don't think anyone else in the league was a player at this price, but it is still a blow to the wide receiver room as Kirk racked up 1,603 yards and 11 touchdowns over his last two years in Arizona. Just a couple of weeks ago, Arizona traded for wide receiver Marquise Hollywood Brown during the first round of the NFL draft. This trade was clearly made because the Cardinals knew that that nuke suspension was coming and it makes a lot more sense now than it did live when it was actually happening. Arizona gave up a ton to get Brown to Arizona. They traded away their first round pick, which was number 23 overall, and they even added their fourth round pick, which was the 100th overall selection. Now, it is easy to see now why the price was so steep. The Ravens probably had no interest in trading away Marquise Brown, but they knew they had a ton of leverage because the Cardinals were in a very desperate situation, and the return then became too good to pass up. So where then does that leave the receiving core to enter 2022? Well, the Cardinals have Marquise Brown now, AJ Green, Rondell Moore, and Andy Isabella with Nuke on suspension. Now, this is certainly not a poor core by any stretch of the imagination, and I actually believe that the fit of Marquise Brown here in Arizona is gonna work out fairly well if he and Kyler Murray can get on the same page early on. One of the reasons that Hollywood found so much success in Baltimore was the off-schedule plays that Lamar Jackson was able to create, finding Brown downfield a lot of times after the call had broken down. He's gonna have an opportunity to do much of the same with Murray improvising, and he also is gonna mesh really well with beating defenses over the top. That is, if he can hold on to the ball, of course. He tied for sixth in the NFL for most drops at the position in 2021, and actually, when you look at that number and you actually watched him, it kind of seems a little low. 
For AJ Green, this guy clearly has something left in the tank, and he's once again going to be asked to step up into a larger role to help fill the void left by Nuke over the first six games of the season. He's not going to get to that 1,000-yard barrier, but he is going to do enough to keep Arizona afloat as either the secondary or maybe the tertiary option here, as long as he runs the route that he is supposed to and doesn't block cornerbacks instead. Rondale Moore is an interesting case, as he burst onto the scene early in the year before more or less fading off into obscurity as the season wore on. This is a little troubling because the Cardinals certainly needed him to step up. Injuries definitely slowed him down too, and they kept Moore out of the final three games of the season. With more opportunities in 2022, it's going to be up to Kingsbury to find more and probably better ways to get him involved. But there is a chance that he does level up next year. Let's also take a quick look at the tight end core for Arizona. They have Zach Ertz in that trade from last year and Max Williams. And Arizona actually drafted the number one tight end prospect as well. Now, after a slow start to the season, a new home in the desert was just the cure that ailed Zach Ertz. He was an excellent addition for Arizona midseason, and he exploded onto the scene over the final 11 games of 2021, making the Eagles look pretty silly for giving him up for a sixth round rookie and a fifth round pick. I anticipate a big year from Ertz as the go-to guy underneath, and the rapport that he's already built with Murray showed up and that was pretty much immediately. Ertz is gonna lead that tight end group with Max Williams as the number two once he's back from that injury that kept him out for the final 12 games last year. We finally get to Kyler Murray and we're gonna look at how he stacked up in 2021. Now Murray was off to a torrid start before his ankle injury basically derailed the season for him. He was in the MVP conversation and he had the Arizona offense humming prior to it. He's gonna be fully recovered in 2022, so that's not something that Arizona needs to worry about. But his playing style can cause him to take more punishment than might be wise, especially when you consider his size. The talent here is undeniable, and he's a difference maker when he is healthy and he is mobile. He needs to stay that way to give Arizona a legit shot at a postseason berth. Unfortunately, it's not just on the field. We have to look out with Murray. Off the field issues have also crept up in the offseason as far as Kyler Murray's contract is concerned. It certainly could be rectified prior to the season starting and that would be a very wise move for the Cardinals. No added distractions are necessary now more than ever. Now Cardinals general manager Steve Keim recently alluded to a possible timetable for a long-term contract with Kyler Murray to get done. This is what he said. Anytime you've seen quarterbacks after the third year do their contract extensions, it's generally been anywhere from July to September, and he said that on Mad Dog Sports Radio. So we looked at the offense, all the weapons, and the players in it. Now let's look at the schedule for the Cardinals this year. They have one of the toughest schedules in the NFL at first glance, and the NFC West is already a gauntlet. Outside of their own division, they have to play the AFC West this year, which I am already on record as saying is the best division in football. Let's look at their non-division games here for a second, and depending on who they face in those first six weeks, which by the way, schedule release on Thursday, heck yes, there really are no pushovers outside of their division besides maybe Atlanta and Carolina. Every other game is going to be tough for Arizona, and that leaves a distinct possibility that they could get behind early in that divisional race without Nuke. In the NFC West, that could be a death sentence. When we consider the issues that Cliff Kingsbury has had his entire career with late season swoons, it puts quite a damper on Arizona's playoff prospects. Now I do love this Cardinals team, but I really do not think that they have enough without Hopkins to push for a playoff spot, especially if they get behind the eight ball early on. When you look at the schedule, the division competition, and the struggles that this team has had without Nuke last year, it does not paint a pretty picture. So to wrap it up, what are the Arizona Cardinals without DeAndre Hopkins? I think if things fall right for them early, they can win some games and kind of stem the tide until Nuke returns. They certainly have a shot at making the postseason, but I would say right now, this looks more like a 500 team than it does one that is going to challenge for the division crown, at least in those first six games of the season. Now, depending upon where they sit, 
after that, we might already know what the end of the story is going to be for Arizona. And that is all she wrote for the video today. I really hope you guys enjoyed this content. I hope you learned something. Please drop your comments down below. I wanna hear your thoughts on the situation and what you view this team as. If you guys have any content that you are craving, drop that down below as well. I do these videos for you. If you are new to the channel, please consider giving me a like and subscribe. I cannot thank you enough for the support. It means so very much to me. This is Relentless Press. I'm your host, Abraham Opass, and we'll see you next time.